Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India start this lecture with a thought process from Nobel laureate T. S. Eliot, uh, who says, where there is no temple, there shall be no homes. This is a quite a wonderful statement what he has given and uh, today we will be discussing about the temple architecture in ancient India and uh, if you look at in the last lecture, we basically discuss about how to make buildings such that we can have a comfortable stay inside, particularly when the temperature is shooting up due to the global warming. And you can also see some of uh, this uh, our work on ancient science and technology in this website, also general work about Awake Mother India, how to we can develop our country. And uh, if you look at the temple, basically a uh, word which is uh, originates from the Latin templum. That means, it is basically structure reserved for religious activities, but I have added spiritual. Spiritual and religious are not same. Spiritual is basically way of life and it is more expandable than the religious. Religious in a very parochial sense and where the prayer, sacrifices and rites are being performed. That is the way what uh, western people will be thinking in uh, about the utility of the temple. But uh, in Sanskrit, we call it Mandira, the house of worship. And uh, even in our home, we call it as a Mandira, because our body is also known as temple in which the soul will be residing. So, therefore, temple plays a very uh, you know important part and parcel of Indian civilization. As I told that Indian civilization is quite old and still it is living, still it is alive, although it is uh, now at a very uh, uh, ruining state. And uh, let us now look at temples in India. And uh, temples in India were regarded as sacred places and with vital links that can connect finite men to the infinite God. This is a very profound statement you can think that that differentiates between a man and an animal, because man is unique in the animal kingdom as he is having the power to feel the infinitives of the God, because he can be a God. And uh, that is of course, another concept which I do not want to dwell in, but it is very important uh, so far the philosophy of uh, Hindu is concerned that is infinite, you can achieve the infinitude and uh, that has been basically communicated to the people who will be going to the temple for performing the pujas. The temples are built on the principles of Silpa Shastra, particularly little later on, maybe in the medieval period. And uh, Silpa Sastra described the temple as a symbolic miniature representation of the cosmos. If you look at the whole cosmos is nothing but an infinite domain, one cannot say that what is cosmos. So, it is infinite and man can achieve the infinitude in his own life provided he perform certain kind of rituals and also the attain this infinitude when you will integrate uh, with the whole cosmos. Of course, one has to start with his own body 
and then he has to move uh, have a relationship with the and part and parcel of family members then he has to uh, be integrated with the entire society and then of course expand his horizon of being a part and parcel of all living beings and also the non-living beings because that is very important aspect a man can uh, really do that not the animal and that our ancestors had realized and they always exert the people to attain that infinite use and uh, because what our scripture says expansion is life contraction is death so today in the modern life what we are doing we are trying to getting narrow to ourselves our own interest selfish interest instead of expanding our horizon and temple helps in expanding the horizon of the mind of a person so and it became a you know part and parcel of the cosmos it is having a very great uh, philosophical concepts which i don't want to dwell in but please keep in mind this aspect also a uh, tamil prabhu says don't live in a town where there is no temple so look at this is a very old proverb and as if ts iliot was aware of this even sanskrit there is a proverb that gopura darsanam koti punyam that means by seeing a temple tower gives a enormous blessings of course the punya uh, word is a difficult word to translate i have put it as but punya is having different connotation so uh, it is also considered as the center of learning for general people and if you look at the temple is considered as the citadel of the indian culture and traditions because from this uh, temple itself the people were getting educated and also learning how to lead a life all our culture and the traditions are being uh, kept alive because of temple culture unfortunately today it is not that and as a result uh we are facing the problem of uh the cultural invasion now if we want to really fight the cultural invasion we need to go back to the temple and also a temple should not be a center of money or wealth generation and earlier it was also a wealth generation but those were being utilized for the welfare of the people unfortunately today it is not the case and uh, a typical temple consist of following major elements namely an entrance or a uh, often with a porch and one or more attached or detached mandapas or the halls the inner sanctum called the garbhagriha and in which basically the deities will be placed and then tower build around this garbhagriha which is the main temple or main shrine let us look at the example of muktesar temple uh, in odisha which was built around 950 to 975 c and uh, this is having a main temple here shown this is the main temple and which is having sikara and this is the garbhagriha and this is the pedestal on which the temple is built and uh, this is having amalaka which is a, a very nice structures which is uh, having a utility of giving the load basically and also it looks good and kalasha is a part and this is uh, a emblem which is being used this is meant for which indicates the triad and this corresponding to the lord shiva and of course the flag will be there and uh, let us look at the types of temple has for the historical point of view the type of temples one can really divide into three categories depending on the time one is ancient temples and other is medieval temples 
and modern temple. Of course, the modern temple is a technology meeting of various traditions. In modern time, the people are following some of the ancient architecture, but the construction methodology is quite different. And uh, here uh, in this lecture, we will be discussing both very ancient temples and then particularly we will be considering most of that uh, you know examples I have taken from the medieval regions, medieval time. And uh, so, some of the modern temples are Lakshmi Narayan temple which was built in Delhi in around 1938, Iskan temple in New Delhi was built around 1998, Lotus temple was built in 1986 in New Delhi and uh, Billa Mandir, uh, Jaipur, Rajasthan and uh, Akshar Dam in the Gandhi Nagar and uh, in Gujarat was built in 1992, there is the Akshar Dam also, Akshar Dam in De New Delhi also. So, these are the some of the uh, famous temples I have just mentioned here, but there might be several of them. If you look at uh, the number of temples in this country will be uh, quite huge. And if you look at ancient temple even that is also quite uh, large numbers, although lot of temples were destroyed due to the invasion and due to the uh, being uh, ruled over by the foreigners and uh, also of different faith and they were uh, just destroying the temples. Uh, mercilessly. And uh, in spite of that thing today also we are having so many uh, temples that it is quite enormous. Even I was told that uh, something in the southern part of the country more than 1 lakh temples are there uh, which are of ancient origin particularly uh, I mean ancient means not strict uh, sense it is not ancient it is basically before the uh, maybe 1200, 1300 C. The temples were uh, are there and other, of course, the northern side uh, some of the temples are quite old which are still there and being utilized or being used by the people. And uh, these are the uh, very pilgrimage center for them, lot of uh, people go and tour them and see them and get uh, uh, you know a lot of enjoyment and also they feel how it is, how they were being built and uh, some of them are declared as the world heritage and by the UNESCO rather large number of them are in India. And uh, some of them are Sun temple in Konark in Odisha, the Khazura temple in Madhya Pradesh, Ajanta caves in Aurangabad and uh, Brihadeswar temple in Tanjore in Tamil Nadu, Sanchi stoops are in Madhya Pradesh. These are uh, basically world heritage temples which are declared by the UNESCO because of its uniqueness, because of its design, intricate design what we are having. And it is quite old also, it is a part of, they are the part of the, our Indian culture and tradition. So, uh, let us look at uh, basic principle of uh, Indian temples and the Hindu temple architecture has been evolved over 2000 years it is not a new thing, right? it is evolved, but unfortunately this evolution has almost stopped you can say that way and today people are uh, making temples, but they do not understand the basic principle of the temple architectures which were enshrined in our scriptures, because they do not aware about the, uh, the scriptures and also it tenets how to make a Hindu temple. And evolution of Indian temples took place within rigid framework, self shastra and religious philosophy. And I feel that uh, people do not know or aware about this, uh, the philosophy and also the uh, tenets of the self shastra about the Hindu temples, because these are not being a part of the uh, engineering curriculum and people always feel shy about it and as if the about a secular aspect of it and then you know it is a really big problem. Because one should not look from that point of view of narrowness, rather one has to look at the technology point of view and it is also 
the utility point of view and uh, one has to look at how long these uh, temples structures have survived over so many years right and i will be in the uh, discussing about next uh, lecture how and why they have survived so many years due to so many calamities right uh, even they have not been damaged by those calamities so as per the hindu philosophy temple can be considered a two way portal between devotees and deity because like you uh, consecrated a basically any god and that is a deity and you should have a connection with that and interaction with that so that is a very important thing which can take place in a uh, temple of course it can take place in other place also but that will give a feel about it and hence the architect had kept the basic tenets in mind which remain unaltered over a long period of time and uh, people were educated and um, but unfortunately we have uh, severe the the traditional education which was uh, going on for years together due to the uh, wrong methodology of education and also the uh, the modern education has taken a various aspect which is not related to the life and temple is a part and parcel of uh, our uh, life in india and uh, because we are spiritual in nature it's not that we are alone spiritual in nature like i i always feel spirituality is a uh, backbone of human life so uh, therefore it is very important to look at those aspect however the temple sculptures and artist were having enough freedom in ornamentation decoration of the temple and also changing the design it is not that they will be strictly following the rules regulation laid down in the silpa shastras but they do uh, really uh, innovate themselves and also change the uh, design and structure of the temple so which if you look at minutely then you will find uh, there had been lot of changes lot of uh, uh, you know occur in the past over period of time distinct styles of temple construction were developed in northern india and uh, southern india influenced by geographical climatic ethnic racial historical and linguistic differences because there is a lot of differences always we feel the india is a country where the diversities are enormous in spite of so much of diversities we are always united through the philosophy of life so that is the great thing which the hindu uh, philosophy talks about it which is can en encompass all the religions of the world so that is the thing uh, uh, which is being depicted in the temple and uh, let us look at brief historical development of hindu temples uh, i will not get into the detailed discussion on this i'll just try to touch upon the basic things and uh, we'll be looking at some of the historical and uh, scriptures which are available and try to co relate those things if you uh, look at some of ancient indian scriptures have mentioned about the idols temples shrines in indian subcontinent for thousands of years right which is existing these uh, you know idols temples and shrines were existing in indian subcontinent for thousands of years and when you look at uh, the some of the texts which already we have discussed for example ashtadai by panini uh, in which it has been mentioned about images or ideals namely agni indra varuna rudra surya and some others like which are uh, basically male god similarly the goddesses names uh, which are mentioned in this uh, text are indrani varunai usha bhavani prithvi extra several of them so uh, if you look at uh, from that point of view uh, that in our uh, scriptures and also part of life always god and goddesses are a part of parcel of our life 
we don't have any discrimination for female. Discrimination against the female is a new phenomenon. If we'll see that, we will be hardly any uh, place where the goddesses won't be there because both are important, male and female are the two sides of the coin and which are being part and parcel of Indian idols, right, worshipping, like we worship both the male and female god, right, that means god and goddesses, we do worship both god and goddesses. That is the very uh, beauty of the, our uh, system. And uh, if you look at uh, Kotele's Arthasastra, uh, in which it has been described a city of temple, each enshrining various Vedic and Puranic deities. Of course, some of them uh, like Agni, Indra, Barunas, and uh, similarly Usha and Barunani, these are all Vedic uh, uh, god and goddesses. Similarly, Rama, Keshava, and others are. Uh, uh, Puranic gods, right? Like uh, when you look at the text of uh, Mahabhashya by Patanjali, which was uh, written around 200 BC, uh, it has been described in this text uh, temples of Dhanapati, Rama, Keshava, Shiva, uh, right? In this text, the worship included uh, dance, music, and extensive, extensive rituals. If you look at the culture, it was a dance and music was a part and parcel of the uh, temple culture, which was prevailing earlier. People have found out an ideal in Mathura in North India, which has been dated to 200 BC. And of course, uh, uh, all these sources, whatever I have discussed right now, all three of these sources have common names describe common ritual, symbolism, significant possibility suggesting that the idea of ideals, temple and shrines goes back to at least 400 BC. And as per the scholar, the very ancient temples were built of brick and wood and later on people might have started using stone for construction of temples. As uh, the material of construction for of temples were not really uh, tenable, and they, therefore, that most of uh, the ancient temple structure have not survived. But however, uh, once they started making in the stones, and those stone temples have survived for ages together, for years together, and as to Michel Meister, the five basic shrine designs and combination might be evolved around 1000 BC, a raised platform with or without a symbol, a raised platform under an umbrella, a raised platform under a tree, or a raised platform enclosed with a railing, a raised platform inside the pillared pavilion. This is uh, what he has uh, really conjectured that this might be the process by which the temple structure might have evolved over the years, particularly maybe uh, before the uh, common era. So, types of temple as per the architectural style and technology, if you look at this classification is known as Nagar or the North Indian temple style. And North Indian temple type generally being located between the Himalayas and Vindhyas in earlier time. This temple looks like that. And uh, if you look at this is the uh, actual picture I have shown here. This temple is uh, basically uh, is considered to be the Nagara temple style. And uh, the Dravida or the South Indian style where uh, is shown here and is a Briyadeswara temple, which we will be touching up and discussing. And this is generally located between the Krishna and Kaveri rivers. And later on, the Besar type or the hybrid, it is a mixture or fusion between the Nagara and the Dravida type, which are located between the Bindyas and Ka Krishnas. And this temple as a Siva temple is Bhaisnath in Himachal Pradesh is shown there, is shown here. 
and Nagara type is it is believed to be originated from the structural temples of Gupta period and Dasavata temple of Devagar or the brick temple of Bhitargaon. The Nagara temple style was popular in northern India as I mentioned earlier. A square temple with a number of graduated projection basically which is known as Ratha, Rathakas are being built and, uh, and Sikhar or the tower gradually curved inwards, this is curved inwards uh, and uh, capped by the spread slab with reefs around the edges that is the your Amalak which is there is known as the load stone also that helps in give providing the load and uh, prominent features of the Sikharas are spiral roof. This is a, a spiral uh, roof which is being provided and uh, generally the Garvagriya in which the main deity resides and uh, beside this there will be Mandapas which is the pillared hall and there will be Ardha Mandapas which is uh, uh, may be there or may not be there uh, in the uh, as a part of Nagar style, but the, so definitely there will be Mandapa we have seen. And let us uh, look at uh, another examples where you can see that uh, this is the platform, the race platform, the Jagati which is known as and this is the Pradakshina path, here, here the people will be moving around the temple and this is the Garvagriya and uh, there is a antarala where the devotees can see the god and uh, the maha mandapa and there is a mandapa this is the pillar uh, these are the pillars pillared hall and ardha mandapa and this is the sikhara of course the amalaka uh, is here in this portion and this there is a kalasha Kalasa is a very important aspect of the temple, although uh, some of the temples may not be having, but uh, it represents the cosmos, the uh, you know inside that uh, entire, it represents the entire cosmos. And Rekha Prashada, this is a simple Sikhara is square at the base and curves inward to a point of the top like, uh, like that it will be square here, but it will be uh, going up and in a curved and this is mainly used for housing the Garvagriya. And uh, Pamashana that is, uh, is a building is a broader and shorter than Rekha uh, buildings. Its roof is composed of several slabs that gently rise to the single point over the center of building where the Rekha towers rises sharply. And this we will be discussing, this is also known as uh, uh, Pida temple because these are uh, tires which will be there, which will be uh, being built of like a inverted staircase, which I will uh, show you, I will discuss it little later on. And in many North Indian temples, the fashana was used for the mandapa, a rekha for garvagriya. And Nagara temple style has two distinct feature, one is the planning and other elevations. And the plan is a square with a number of gradual projection in the middle of each side that forms a cruciform shape. A ratha is a vertical offset projection on the plan of sanctum and sikara above which is generally carried up from the bottom of the temple to the superstructure. And uh, that is known as Ratha. One can divide this temple of various types. Ratha is basically projection and there will be three Ratha temple, Pancharatha table and Saptaratha tables. In three Ratha, uh, basically uh, there will be two projection will be there like one and two right will be projection and pancharata there will be three projections like if you look at this side is one projection this is a three ratha and uh, in pancharata this is the temple of this is a one projection here and this is another projection this is a second and this similarly this is also third projections like is there so uh, therefore and this is 
known as Parshuram temple in Bhuvaneshwar. It is uh, the Tri Ratha kind of temple. And this is the Pancharatha table, like this will be one projection, there is a two projection and this will be three projections. So, therefore, this is known as Pancharatha projections and this projection can occur throughout the height of the structure. And uh, the example is basically Lingaras temple in Bhuvaneshwar, this will be one, two, three, like you know uh, kind of projection is there. So, therefore, this is known as Pancharatha, of course, there will be Saptaratha projection and Navaratha uh, will be basically five projection. And in the elevation, it looks like a tower known as a Sikhara as it gradually inclined upwards along a convex curve, like if you look at these curves, you can see from here. And uh, it is also known as Rekha Devula or a temple, Devula means temple in Odia. And this type of uh, temple has two structure, namely taller main temple and shorter mandapas, which I have already discussed. And in the main sign, a bell shaped structure adds to the height. Of course, uh, this kind of Nagara temple will be having Garvagriya, Jagamona, Nattamandara and Bhogamandira, we will see that. If you look at, uh, this is a Lingaras temple of Odisha, built uh, around 617 to 657 C by the ruler Jajati Keshari in 7th century and the height of main temple is about 54 meters this temple. And uh, so, various parts if you look at is the Garvagriya and this is the Jagamon assembly hall and uh, the Nata Mandira festival land and Bhoga Mandira offering hall. So, this is a part of basically Nagara uh, style of temple. Let us look at uh, the Dravidian or the South Indian temple styles. It is found in southern Indian states of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala and Karnataka. And uh, of course, for building this kind of temples, the various uh, kingdoms or empires have contributed and uh, some of them are Pallavas, Cholas, Pandyas, Chera, Chalukyas, Rashtrakutas, Vaisalas, Vijayanagar and uh, others also have made substantial contribution to the evolution of Dravidian architecture through the ages. This I have just shown you the uh, a Gopuram, Gopuram means basically entrance temple which is uh, looks to be quite different than the Nagar style, it is having a various stairs like various uh, floors is having, if you look at this one floor, second floor, third floor, fifth floor, uh, fourth floor, fifth floor, sixth floor like that it goes on, it is a very uh, pyramid kind of structures which is having. And uh, so, let us look at the Dravidian temple like I am, I am uh, Dravida Indian temple styles and I have taken the example of Tirumana Malai temple which was built in around 900th century and it is located on the foothills of Annamalai hills is dedicated to the deity Lord Shiva. And uh, if you go to this temple, uh, this is a very beautiful temple and Nataraj is, the, is uh, being worshipped in this temple. And this is basically the Annamalai hill which is there, this is the hill. And uh, temple complex covers 10 hectares, he is one of the largest in India. And Dravida or the southern tile as a pyramid shaped tower as I have told, this is the shape is a, like a pyramid consisting of progressively small storied of small pavilions and narrow throats and a dome, the, in the end there will be a dome on the call known as Sikhara. And uh, pyramid shaped temples is known as also colis, which are dependent on intricate carved stone in order to create a step design consisting of many statues of deities, warriors, kings and dancers. Particularly these temples are built in the medieval periods where the Silpa Sastras uh, really has been already been written. And uh, as I told at that time, 
the temples were considered to be the citadel of the culture and tradition also to protect their kingdom from the invasion. So, they were trying to unite people also through this uh, temple culture and that was a great thing that is why you will find some of the temples were having also moats and then uh, very uh, fortified uh, walls. Tiruvanna Malai temple houses four gateways towers known as Gopuram, these are the Gopurams right and the tallest is the eastern tower with the 11 stories and a height of 66 meters around 217 feet making it one of the tallest temple towers in India. And uh, as I told earlier, so this is a citadel of uh, culture and also uniting the people. Therefore, lot of music and dance were being also being developed in this um, center or in the temple itself. So, Dravidian style temples consist of almost invariably four parts arranged in different manner, but differing in themselves only according to the age which they are executed. Because uh, those are executed differently, but the main it contains uh, the, all the thing. The principal part of the temple is called the Bhimana as in Nagara style, uh, they call it Bhimanam, uh, it is a very basically Sanskrit word and it is always square in plan and uh, mounted by the pyramidal roof one or more stories. It contains the cell wh where the image of the god or his emblem is placed for the worshiping, worship purposes. And uh, porches are the mandapam, basically it is a mandapam, this uh, pronounce is mandapam, which always cover and precede the door leading to the cell. And Gopuram, uh, which is also known as uh, gate pyramids where the principal features in the quadrangle enclosures that surround the more notable temples, because as I told that people can enter from various uh, region four directions so that generally four or more number of Gopurams are built around the fortified wall. And the pillared halls which is known as solitaries or chaudis uh, are used for many purposes are invariably accomplishment of these temples and these are used for various purposes. Each temple uh, complex will be um, having a lot of other things like uh, water bodies and then trees and it is really uh, very sustainable uh, in that sense that if something will happen it can survive for a uh, few days at least of their own. So, uh, that was a very important aspect which were kept in, ma in mind particularly in the southern part of the country. This is the famous uh, temple in Madurai which is known as Menakshi temple. Some of you might have visited uh, this temple which is quite famous uh, not only in India across the globe. And uh, this Menakshi and Sundareshwar temple is basically located on the southern bank of the Bhaigai river. And as I told earlier, it is one of the biggest temple in India. It was originally built by Pandya king Kula Sekaran and rebuilt by Tirumalai Nayakar in 16th century. And uh, this temple, let us uh, look at the an aerial view of the compound from the top of the southern Gop Gopuram and looking north side. And the restored temple complex has 14 Gopuram. Gopuram means basically entrance temple and which is uh, typical of uh, very bigger than the actual uh, their own shrine. The height of this Gopuram ranges from 45 to 50 meters and with southern Gopuram is tallest among all which is around 51.9 meters that is around 170 feet. And uh, if you look at the main shrine is located here, this is your main shrine. And this uh, main shrine was gilded with the gold by Nayaka ruler uh, during uh, 17th century. 
and that looks like uh, this it looks very beautiful you know uh, this temple and uh, which uh, basically uh, is uh, in which the Menakshi is uh, being uh, worshipped and the temple complex uh, is quite huge which spreads over around 14 acres and which is the center of the old city of Madurai because this city was built around the temple as being discussed by several researchers and it consists of monuments inside number of concentric enclosures each layer fortified with high masonry walls and the courtyard is close to the square with each of side about 800 to 850 square. This is your courtyard which is not shown here, I will maybe in the next slide I will be showing you. And it is also well known for the thousand pillar, pillar halls which is located in this temple. And uh, if you look at uh, this uh, Madurai Minaksha temple, as I told it is having the pyramidical roof and these are basically uh, mandapam or they call it mantapam. And uh, what I was talking about, this is a, a courtyards which is having water bodies, this is a water bodies and this is thousand filler all which is uh, known as basically chaltries or the chaudis and it is quite a, uh, famous for its architecture and also in size. So, the hall of thousand pillars is, uh, is one of the largest mandapam in the any temple complex uh, which was built by Aryanth Modulier, minister and commander of Biswanath Nayakar in uh, year 1569. And of course, it is known as thousand pillars, but people found out that it is around 985 pillars. Uh, and I am not aware like what happens to other uh, 15 pillars. And uh, it is uh, looks to be quite uh, gigantic pillar structures and quite huge. And each pillar is having several uh, um, deities which will be there, but uh, some of the uh, pillars are uh, quite uh, different like means uh, some people claim that of course, I have not really checked it, but some uh, some of the pi pillars will be having different uh, uh, music instruments and one says uh, one can claim that that it will make some sound if you touch some of the uh, proper portions. And uh, this soaring Gopuram is 150 feet uh, high Gopuram and its size is something 240 to uh, 250 feet, it is quite a huge. And at the center of the mandapam uh, is the ideal of Chirasava of Lord Nataraj, which is there and then people are doing and it is a very huge structures. And there is a lot of paintings which are being on the roof top, uh, which you can see is a very quite colorful and interesting. Now, question arises how they maintain those things and how they did it and look at from the construction point of view, it is marvelous and uh, mind boggling. So, uh, let us uh, now take another example of uh, Dravidian uh, temple structure as I had mentioned earlier, Briyadasa temple which was uh, built in around uh, 1010 during the Chola's rule in Tanjavar and there was no concrete, no steel frame, no anti corrosion chemicals were used and it was made entirely of granite uh, stone and granite is considered to be the strongest uh, you know uh, stone and which is difficult to walk and it stands proud even after thousand years. It is not this temple, but other temples also uh, living for more than thousand years. And uh, the temple co complex was designed axial and symmetrical geometry like this way, the way the Nagara style is being made, it is little bit different than the uh, uh, Dravidian style. And uh, it is built in a rectangular covering of something 790 feet 
the east to west side and 400 feet north to south side. Uh, and the five main structures this temple is having, one is Sri Vimana, the sanctum, this is your Sri Vimana. and whose height is 208 feet and uh, Mukha Mandapa, then next is the Mukha Mandapa, Maha Mandapa is a great hall which is having a very lengthy one and Ardha Mandapa and this is and then of course, the Nandi Mandapam, this is your Nandi Mandapam. Ardha Mandapam and this is your Maha Mandapam. So, this uh, structure if you look at it is quite uh, huge and then uh, quite big one and this is uh, part of Nagar style. And in this temple, Lord Siva is being worshipped in the form of Linga and uh, its size is something 29 feet high, which is one of the largest monolith Linga sculpture in India. If you look at it, it is quite a huge. A person has to stand on the upstairs and then uh, do all the worshipping. And there is also a metal, uh, there is a snake, five headed cobra snakes um, on the top of this lingam made of metal and one can see that how it was being fabricated, uh, constructed at that time and beside this there is a deepam which was a very huge one which is shown here. So, uh, and this is of course, the uh, close of uh, these are basically a view from the distance which is encompassing all the thing and uh, this is your five headed. cobra snake and made of metal and this is your gopuram which is quite intricate and a quite huge one and this is the main entrance and there will be also the another doors which is uh, meant maybe for deities and also uh, different regions will be it is quite intricate lot of sculptures are being on and then uh, it is quite uh, difficult to make that kind of things. So, uh, if you look at the basic characteristics of the Dravidian temple, basically Garbhagriha will be there, uh, which contains the main deity of the temple. It has a tower called Bhimana over it, it is similar to the uh, Nagara style, but the uh, design of the Bhimana is quite different, it is a pyramid kind of uh, shape. And Maha Mandapa or the Ardha Mandapa are in front of Garbhagriha inner sanctum. Gopurams are the entrance towers and which are quite elaborate in nature and which is sometimes bigger than the main uh, uh, temple. And Baranda next to inside walls of Pradakshina path and tanks and wells which are either sacred or for ba bathing purposes were a part of it and subsidiary deities and shrines dedicated to minor gods, most of which are aligned axially. This is the uh, very important part of the Dravidian temples. And beside this, lot of uh, greeneries are always there in the temple. And uh, that is the eco-friendly uh, environment were created. And uh, beside this, uh, lot of uh, Ayurvedic plants are being also uh, being placed in that uh, in the temple for puja purposes other purposes. Now, we look at the Besha type is a hybrid style between the northern and southern style. It is a basically fusion of both Nagar and Dravidian style of temple architecture. And uh, these temples were built in the Deccan under late Chalukya of Kalani and Hoysala and uh, in basal style height of temple towers get, gets reduced with the same number of tires which are accomplished by reducing the height of individual tires. So, let us look at a typical basal style and this is a basal style temple right.
and in this case if you look at these tires are being the numbers of tires are being reduced and then uh, as a result the height of individual tires been sorted out and it looks uh, different than your Nagara style and it is a uh, combination of both the Nagara and uh, the Davida style. So, prime temples of these styles is uh, Chenna Kesava temple in Belur in Karnataka and Brahma temple in Puska Rajasthan. There is several other example like uh, Bhakteshwar Solar temple, uh, Tirukulam temple in Tamil Nadu, Lakshman temple, Parasna temple, Vishwana temple and several of them, uh, but I will be discussing only two this uh, two of them one is Keshava temple in Bela and uh, Brahma temple in Pushkar of Rajasthan. So, let us look at this uh, Ch Chena Keshav temple which was uh, built by Somanatha in Somanathapura in 1258 C. And uh, this is uh, temple is uh, a Vaishnavat Hindu temple on the banks of river Kaveri or Somanathapura, uh, which is located around 38 kilometer of Mysore city. And uh, the ornate of temple is a model illustration of Hoysala architecture, which is quite uh, distinct and different as I told this comes under the Besara uh, style. And the main temple is on the high star saved platform with three symmetrical sanctum, which is not shown here, it will be inside. And the sanctum say are common community hall and Sabha Mandava with many pillars. And uh, if you look at uh, these things, these are basically made out of black stone, which is quite difficult to really work. And uh, as I told that, uh, but however, it could sustain the deep cuts and take a fine polish. You can look at these are uh, these uh, sculptures is quite intricate in nature, and it is quite difficult. One can think of how one will wonder how they were uh, really developing such a intricate sculptures in this hard stone like uh, the black stone right so let us uh, look at the beshara or the hybrid uh, type which is uh, as i told that is a brahma temple and brahma temple in puskar city and uh, it is uh, meant for basically jagatpita brahma and it is dedicated to the jagatpita brahma the hindu creator god which is known as brahma uh, it is believed that this uh, from Brahma, the all the people have come, or the whole universe is created from him, as per the our uh, belief system. When Brahma came down to earth, he named the place where flower, that is Pushpa, fell from the Brahma's hand, Kar. Therefore, that word is uh, basically known as Pushkar. That place is known as Pushkar. Pushkar is often described in the scriptures as the only Brahma temple in the world. Uh, most of the temples will be for other deities like Shiva, Vishnu, Devi, Durga and others, but uh, this is the only temple what is being considered to be the unique. Although the present temple structure dates to the 14th century, temple is believed to be existing even 2000 years back and temple is mainly built of marble and stone slabs. It has distinct red pinnacle that is Sikhara, this is the temple, this is basically Sikhara. And uh, a Hansabad motif is there because that is the symbol related to the Brahma. And front view of Brahma temple in Puskar is shown here, which uh, looks to be quite uh, different uh, than the both uh, Nagara style and then uh, the Dravida style. It is believed that it was built by sage Vishwamitra after Brahma's Yajna and it is also uh, believed that Brahma himself chose the location for his temple and temple is built with stone slabs and blocks joined together with molten lead 
and this is a new techniques which is uh, being uh, being used and the red sikara spire of temple and symbol of hamsa a swan or a goose the mount of brahma are distinct feature of this temple sikara is about 700 feet around uh, 210 meter in height it is a quite a huge one and uh, this is the idol brahma is inside this temple which is being worshipped by the people and Puskara is said to have uh, something 500 temples, 8 are large and the rest are small and of course many of these temples were destroyed during Mughal emperor Aurangzeb's rule between 1658 to 1707. So, uh, let me conclude this uh, lecture with a few remarks that the Hindu temple architecture is considered to be evolved during the Gupta period as it is considered to be the golden period in Indian history. And later on uh, there is a lot of uh, development of the temple taking the clue from the temples built during the Gupta period and temple, temple thus became the center of learning for popularization of Indian culture and tradition. And during 600 to 750 CE, Hindu temple architecture were developed, which can be classified into two main categories. One is Nagara style in northern India, and the other is Dravidian style in southern part of our country. Beyond 750 CE, a fusion between Nagara and the Dravida styles uh, were emerged in the Deccan region which is known as Besar style and which is a little shorter one and it is uh, also very compact one. Beside these three style of temple uh, architecture, several regional varieties uh, were uh, really came up and uh, because of they experimented with various uh, methodologies. Some of them are like Kalinga architecture, Badami or Chalukya architecture, Hoyasala architecture and several others have come up. But unfortunately, after 1200-1300 CE, this country was uh, really uh, not being ruled by the Hindu people and they were uh, being uh, ruled by the uh, other uh, peoples and later on Britishers came and they lost the this culture of developing the temples and as they were not having enough resources. And therefore, we stopped it, but uh, several kinds of materials namely bricks, stone, terracotta, iron, other metals were used for the structure and un, uh, for ornamentation and even as I told like gold has been used, so also the silver and the sophistication of ornamentation building techniques became more pronounced with the further maturity of different uh, styles of architectures. And uh, unfortunately, as I told earlier that we lost the vigor of developing the new temple and also experimenting on it because we are under the uh, foreign rules. And um, uh, but after independence, uh, we have also not made any inroads in develop, although these temples are being utilized by the people and which are survived all the invasion, all the okay, natural calamities, but still uh, we uh, need people to maintain those temples and also uh, th that needs uh, maintenance. And for that we need to teach uh, and develop engineer, teach these uh, uh, technologies to even modern people so that they can really uh, carry out the maintenance work of these temples which are being utilized by people even today. So, uh, therefore, it is important to include this uh, design procedure for this uh, ancient temple so that we can really create engineers for the maintenance of these temples. Thank you very much.